Hey everybody, aloha. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. We've got a, I think going to be a really fun episode of Security Matters today and we're going to sneak some security in, but we're going to talk a lot about communication. Um, I'll give you the story about how we got here after we met our guest. Uh, Steve D. Sims is with us today. Uh, Steve is an author. He's an entrepreneur. He's super accomplished guy. And I'm really, really happy that you agreed to join me here today, Steve. I appreciate it. Um, we will get into the title. We'll, we'll tease the audience just a little and we'll let them meet you first. Um, some of my audience people I know from industry sent me pictures with your book. So they, so you, you are known in the security industry for sure. But for those who may not know you, um, I'll let Steve give an intro of himself and what he's been up to. And, um, you know, on social media, we don't give it all away these days, Steve. So as much as you want to share with our audience, uh, have at it and uh, let them, let them get to know you. Thank you. Wow. Um, <laughs> thanks for throwing me in the deep end there. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm the guy that's, I suppose, known for doing well, Forbes called me the real life Wizard of Oz, and I was also called the Make-A-Wish Foundation for people with really big checkbooks. So I'm the guy you called when you wanted to do something a little bit special, a little bit exciting. I've had people ask me to get them married in the Vatican by the Pope, a drum lesson by Guns N' Roses, sing on stage with our favorite rock band, um, close down museums in Florence, set up a, a dinner party. Uh, for six people at the feet of Michelangelo's David. And then just for shits and giggles, I had Andrea Bocelli come in and serenade them while they were eating their pasta. So I'm the guy that got people to do some pretty, pretty cool things to increase their cocktail stories. Nice. And that takes um, a lot of communication, I'm sure. So I want to give I want to give a little background. So I um I pulled a I saw a quote on LinkedIn and it said, don't be easy to understand, be impossible to misunderstand. And so I grabbed it. Fortunately, I credited Steve for, for his quote in my LinkedIn post, which he saw. Um, and it because, you know, our insecurity communication is so critical. And there's a quite a distinction between being easy to understand and being impossible to misunderstand. Oh, yeah. I, I, I immediately, the thing that came to mind to me was like a stop sign. And then I was in Wyoming and I saw one that said, whoa like W-H-O-A on the stop sign. I thought, well, now that's a little unclear. But anyway, um, let's let's get into communication um, and let's talk about the first piece. Because I, I said, here's the thing about simplicity. And then I used your quote, don't be easy to understand. Don't, you know, be impossible to misunderstand. So let's talk about being easy to understand and what some of the problems or misconceptions can be between the, like the sender and receiver when it's supposed to be easy to understand when we're talking about something like negotiating, you know, dinner at the feet of David or whatever it may be. <laughs> so let, let, let's break it down. Um, okay. First things, and we can we can very easy. I work with a lot of people in security. I've worked with a lot of the military, and I'm very honored to have actually even spoken to three-star generals in the Pentagon. So nice. I have a little bit of an idea of the battle that you guys have with the communication. But the first mistake anybody makes in communication is you. It doesn't matter what you are saying and what you believe you are saying. All that matters is how the recipient is receiving the message you're giving, okay? You may be thinking, well, this is crystal clear to me, buddy. I know exactly what I'm saying. Why the hell aren't you getting it? But if they're having a bad mood or if they're in a stressful situation, which a lot of security, mm. especially the police, if you've been pulled over, there's blue lights going on. Oh, my God, what's happened? Maybe you've had one beer in you. You're panicking. Ugh. You're not thinking straight. So you're in a heightened level of stress. Your reception is clogged. It's misty. So now and today, and we can take it away from the military. We can look at the media. The media is giving us a lot of information. Oh, sorry. The media is throwing a lot at us on a regular basis. You know, we're in a world today of mass distortion and distraction. We've got to be clearer. You joked about that woe and that stop. Communication is brevity. The beautiful thing that I can now be thankful is beautiful about my past is I never overthought and I never overtalked. So I would say, mm -hmm. hey, I want this studio at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. How do we make it happen? And that'd be it. 
I would be so crystal clear when I had a client contact me and he said, Hey, I want to have an amazing dining experience in Florence. Um, in my past job, which was a high end concierge firm, I always thought, well, how miraculous can I make it? How ridiculous can I go for? How stupid a goal can I go for? And then I would go to those people and I'd say, Hey, I need this Wednesday night to do this, 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 how do we make it happen? And my conversations were so short, so direct, so open, because notice one thing about my question. I never asked, can I? <laughs> I said to him, how do we make this happen? What needs to happen for me to be at the feet of Michelangelo's David on Wednesday? If you were to turn around and went, no, you'd look like a moron that couldn't understand the English language because this, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Ah. So it threw them. So I realized ages ago, if you don't like the answer, you're probably asking the wrong question. Mm, and once I, once I understood that, I got really, really good at asking questions where I stood no liability. If I turned around to you and I said, uh, hey, Andrew, um, beer tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Now, you may be in a good mood and you're thinking, going out for a beer with Steve tomorrow night, hey, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's just say, for argument's sake, on your way home, you got a flat tire. Let's say you got home to an email from, from, I don't know, the police that your accountant had been doing something wrong with your books and you were now in trouble. And a relationship you had had suddenly started defrauding you of your copyright material on these, but you're in a bad mood. My eight o'clock beer now suddenly represents a demand. What, mm. Why does Steve think he mm. can demand me at eight o'clock? Oh, the guy's always demanding. You know, so in which case you may turn around and go 815. I can do it at 815 because you've received it in a different mental state. Therefore, my message, while it was conveyed with directness and simplicity, was was altered by the recipient's mood. And that is because today mm. we've got too much noise going on. Mm. So. I think, and, and, and part of it, so we don't get off of the sender too much at first, because they are, they do need to have some, um, we hear, I think, emotional intelligence is kind of the word that gets kicked around. I need to make sure that you're ready to receive maybe the information that I'm sending, or or maybe yeah. need to check in with you a little bit first. I know um, my wife would say I'm terrible at that, right? So she'd be like, I, I, what did you say? And I thought it was super clear and super simple, but obviously she wasn't in the mood to even hear what I was trying to communicate. So, you know, um, how do we check in or how do we train ourselves to be aware of, you know, other and, you know, when we're trying to send some information to keep it um, so that it is simple, perhaps, or so that at least it's received uh, in the way that we meant to send it. So if you've ever spoken on a stage or for any of you out there that speak in public, there's a common statement out there that says, know your audience, okay? If you're talking to a bunch of, I don't know, vegan people, you're not going to go in there and start talking about meat, okay? So know your audience, and you can communicate with, how's your day going? Just a simple question like that. How's your day going? Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you at the moment, but I had a couple of questions. You okay if I ask those questions? The response is going to give you a temperature of the recipient, okay? Again, we used an example of being pulled over by the police, the blue light, the stress, the one beer in you. You are heightened. Hey, sorry, can I disturb your evening? How's your evening going for you? You're just something to just check the temperature of the recipient before you engage in, in, in putting out your message. Mm, yeah, critical piece. I think, I think, you know, don't be easy to understand. Maybe that first part of that statement does come from the perspective of the sender more so than the receiver. You know, you shed some light on this Correct. idea that the, re, the, C, the receiver's in a s circumstances or a situation that we may just not perceive. And therefore, what we think is the simplest thing to communicate is – filtered, muddled, walled off, whatever it may be. I, I don't even know. There's there's a lot of stuff that happens in between there for people. Um, insecurity, for sure. Um, what about in other relationships? So just say, let's just say 
Shit. Uh, I, I like the audience one, uh, the one for, you know, public speaking. I've, I've been on some stages where you just drop dead and I've been on some stages where you get everybody engaged and it's really fun. And I, I oftentimes don't understand what, uh, what was different, right? It's the same information. It's the same type of people. They, they don't know this. They should be interested in it, but maybe I thought it's just me. I'm just boring today. I don't know. Um, what, what do you think about the, the, that temperature of the, re of the sender, um, as far as is, 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 uh, is it the, the loudness? Is it the expansiveness? Is it the big words versus little words? Um, how do we, how does the sender keep what they want to say simple? I loved your idea of posing a simple question. Right. Um, what if we need, what if we need to send a little more? So you're going to put your, your, your dog in the bathtub to, to, to wash him. <laughs> All right. What's the first thing you do before you put your dog in the bathtub? Right out the towels. <laughs> <laughs> the towel. What do you do <laughs> focusing on the bathtub? Yeah, turn on the water. Don't you just check the temperature and make sure it's not too hot for the dog and it's going to boil him? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, don't, you just throw the dog in. All right, okay. All right, don't ever have a dog. Um, Good point, the, though. Yeah, the, the, the point is, and that's the same. When I speak to someone, I just gave you a couple of examples if you were in the security industry and you were meeting someone in a stressful environment. When I go on stage... I have about six, six to maybe eight one-liners, openers, okay? And I'll go out there and I'll fire three, okay? I'm going to fire three low-hanging fruit. Okay, I've seen how you've responded. Now, me and you, we got onto this podcast ahead of time, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I do that with every single podcast. Why? Because I want to check the temperature with the host, you yeah. know? What is his tone? Does he want me to be all like this? Or does he want me to be really, really quiet? You know, I spoke on Sunday, Sunday morning to a group of um, uh, women that uh, home-based industries in a Catholic environment. So it was a religious group of home-based uh, businesses. Now, my personality there was different to the personality when I'm speaking to a young men's entrepreneurial group. So sure. all you do is you get in there and you go, okay, well, I'm glad to be speaking here today. And I promise you, I won't tell any dirty jokes. And all you've got to do that, and if, that kind of, if they sit there and they're kind of like, well, that's good, you know, okay, temperature check done. But if they turn around and giggle, then you know, oh, that little sauciness they liked. Now I can go mm. down that path. So... All you've got to do, and, it, and this is where it gets silly, this isn't complicated. This isn't mm. hard to grasp. Temperature check everything. If you're in a bar, and I'm a big fellow, I've been in my share of bar fights. If I'm in a bar and someone's growling, now I'm too old for that crap. You know, when I was younger, <laughs> maybe it would have been, yeah, great, it's a Friday night, let's play. But now I don't want to be doing all of that. So my, my head's going, where is he? You know, where's his head? Is he having a bad day? So you may just turn, the guy staring you out thinking, oh, he's going to roll. You can turn around and go, sorry, man, sorry for staring at you, but I saw that shirt. Really love that shirt. Where'd you get the shirt from? You know, throw him off. And just kind of, I really, I just, I, hey, sorry for bothering you. Just love the shirt. You know, and just, mm. oh, uh, okay. Temperature check how the recipient is. Temperature check it by low ball questions. Low ball jokes, bit of humor. Humor is always good to check out the, uh, the um, to kill a bad or defuse a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. But so many people don't temperature check. You talk mm. about you talk about speakers dying on stage. I've seen speakers that, as you said, have done the exact same word for word speech and died because they were focused on the messenger. They were not yeah. focused on the recipient. If they yeah. had just twisted it at the beginning and gone, hey, who's ever seen me speak before? You know, who's ever heard me speak about this, this, and this? And they got a few people going, yeah, we saw that twice, mate. You know, well, you're in for a third time. So this may show you're going to get really good at it. You know, just anything like that. But the amount of people that don't take the time to do the temperature check, and then sit there scratching their head going, how come this failed? You failed at the beginning.
I love it. I love it because I had opened up my comment about this was here's the thing about simplicity. So see, it's not simple. It's not simple. It really requires a little bit of interaction to start to ensure that our communications are going to be understood, hopefully easy to understand, but it takes a little bit of effort on our part before we send it out. I love that point, Steve. Just I'm going to, bit, though. yeah, 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 a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, so we got to take, we're going to pay some bills. So we got to take a one minute break and we'll be right back with Steve Sims. So stick around. Aloha. I'm Dan Leaf. I go by FIG because I was an Air Force fighter pilot for 33 years, and you have to have a nickname. I get to host on Think Tech Hawaii two shows, Figments, The Power of Imagination, and Figments on Reality. The Power of Imagination introduces you to some of my incredible friends and their life experiences, astronauts, war heroes, Hollywood writers, you name it, they're on it, and you'll be inspired and entertained. And on reality, I'll give you something hard to find non-political commentary on today's events. That's right, non-political, because the vitriol doesn't help folks. So figments, the power of imagination, figments on reality, both on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, everybody. Thanks. And welcome back. We're talking with Steve Sims. Um, let's plug the book just for a minute, Steve, um, author of Blue Fishing, The Art of Making Things Happen. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about the book and uh, what we can learn if we pick up a copy. Uh, uh, will we get good at making things happen? That's what's important. Oh, i got a copy here. So thanks a lot yeah. for giving it a shallow plug there. I, had, I did you. a morning program this morning and we were running through chapters. That's why I have a copy here. i got to tell you straight off the bat, the, the book was a bit of a joke. Um, I actually was at a party and someone said, oh, you should do a book. And they turned out to be a senior at Simon & Schuster. So they were deadly serious. I thought they were joking. Wow. So when they actually came back to me a week later with the contract, I was like, bloody hell, they really want me to do a book. Now, when I spoke <laughs> to them, I said, I don't want to write a book on just naming all the famous, powerful people I deal with, because if I did that, Bottom line of it is I'll be dead before cocktail hour. Um, but I'm very happy to show you how a 15-year-old from, from school who grew up as a bricklayer in East London is now working with Sir Elton John, Elon Musk, Richard Branson, and, and the Vatican. That's the book that I would write. So we went through the simple, impactful, stupid steps that I take to be able to reach and communicate with the most powerful people in the planet. And for me, as I'm going through it, and I was working with a ghostwriter, the ghostwriter would be like, I never thought of doing that. And I'm like, why? It's so easy. <laughs> and that was the thing. When you don't fully understand what you're talking about, you have a tendency mm. to overcomplicate it. How mm. many times have you ever spoken to someone and gone, can you explain that to me? And they've said something like, Ugh, it's pretty hard to explain. You know, mm. now I've mm. been in the rooms with Ray Kurzweil. I've been in the room with Peter Diamandis. I've been in the rooms with Elon Musk. And, you know, when you need something explained, these guys are superb at explaining. I've had artificial intelligence explained to me by Ray Kurzweil, who was the guy that designed Siri before there was even a platform for it to go on. And he's been able to explain it to me because when you know you can explain it. When you don't know, you overcomplicate it and you get this. Color. I, look, it's going to take too long for me to explain. I guarantee Oof. you a genius can explain splitting the atom to you in less than a minute and you'll get a basic grasp on why that's so important. Yeah, I've had I've had that before, you know, and you, you feel somewhat dismissed when someone says that, right? Yes. Or skeptical at least that they why why'd they bring it up or why why are we entertaining the topic even? Like really? Okay. So I get you, I get your point there. Um so we the last the last part of what we were unpacking today was the being impossible to misunderstand. And I, I know the the clarifying question, obviously, you know, did does that make sense to you? Or those there's those ways of of confirming with someone, but how do and if it's if I'm asking for an action, for example, police say halt. 
a guy looks at him and runs, right? Obviously, there's no time to ask the question. Now we've got our problems developed. Um, what's a, what's a, can, can we be impossible to misunderstand at the onset or, or does, is it going to require some back and forth? You know, is that, is that sender? Can I, can I make sure? Again, the problem is, and we've got two answers here, sadly. Um, for one, I've got to ask, I've got to um, go against your confirmation question. You know, does that make sense to okay. you? Are you understanding this? This is a get out. How many people turn around yeah. and go, yeah, 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 I've got it. No, 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 you're, you're, you're right. <laughs> absolutely. And they have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so if you ask them a slightly different question and say, can you see how this would uh, apply to you? And explain mm. to me what you would do with this. Now you're giving them ownership of the education you've just given them to see how they can put it into a context that can help ah. them. You're asking them to qualify it. You know, if I say to you, well, look, okay, I've spoken with you for 20 minutes now. What are you going to do with this? You've, you're now on the back foot to qualify them and go, well, you know, you talked about this. And I'm really focused on the recipient side, Steve. So that's one thing. So never ask, never ask a question which can be a, a basically a costumed or a cloaked mm. dismissal mm. and runaway. I love it. All right? so I that's love that. One thing. Secondly, and this is where we get back into the halt by the police, all right? It's a highly stressful situation. Highly stressful. Before the police officer, as it, and for a start, I take my hats off to all the police out, a great supporter. Thank you for doing what you're doing and allowing me and my family to relax. Big supporter. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but you're scary, some of you, because you've come home for the night, you missed out on that red light, and I've done it, we've all done it. You've missed out on that red light. The, the mileage was, you know, just suddenly got decreased in a little street area, and you didn't see the sign, and the blue light goes, and as I say, you've had a beer in you, and you think, oh, my God, did I have one or did I have 21? You know, you're now starting <laughs> to go through all of this. And it's a street, you've now got a heightened, elevated position. Now, brevity is the key to all clarity, but you can't get clearer than stop. You know, you can't get clearer than that. But again, temperature of your audience. If I'm suspicious, if I'm scared, or worse still, I've got something to hide then those are the kind of people that make stupid decisions. Those are the kind of people that think, I'm going to run, you know? For a start, you should never question if you've had one or 21 beers when you get in a car. You should know for a fact you've only had one at a tops. But <laughs> many things go through your head and you get a little bit disc And the, the, the car, the lights, it's a scary situation. But that's when, sadly, again, it's up to the officer, and I apologize, but it's up to the, the police person to actually try and not defuse the situation, but quickly get a temperature of the recipient. Yeah. How's your evening going? I, I didn't want to disturb you tonight, but we've got a little problem. You know, just sure. something like that would kind of put me at a little bit of, okay, well, what, what is the problem? Are you aware that the, the streets are now 25 miles an hour and you were going through at 35? And, you know, just something like that, you know, would kind of like diffuse it because the problem with the security side from that level uh, and from that platform is that it's the anticipation that you've done something wrong mm. and you don't know that. what it is. It's that kind of what happened? What's wrong? You know, if you walk up to me and you go, are you aware you were doing 35 and a 25? I'd be like, oh, no, I but now, funny enough, I'm relaxed. Why am I relaxed? Even though I've done something wrong, I'm relaxed because I know what the problem is. Mm. It's the anticipation. I've actually been with very, very famous people, and people walk up to them, and as they're walking up to them, the person I'm next to has suddenly kind of straightened up their back a bit. They've started to go a little bit paler. They've started to kind of like restrict their facial mode. And they've kind of got a bit more on guard. And it's because the person that's walking up to them, they don't know if it's a fan. They don't know if they're going to want a selfie. They don't know mm. if they're going to hit them up to be in their next movie. They don't know it. It's the anticipation. Who is this person? What do they want? Do I know them? Do I not? And for me, I've worked with very famous, powerful people. This is what I do. 
I walk up to every famous person I know and I go, hey, how are you? My name's Steve Sims. You don't know me. And then I get into my pitch. But you nice. know, the first thing that happens is they go, they go quiet. How many times have you been at a business event, a wedding, or some kind of group location, and someone's come up to you and they've gone, Andrew? And for a split second, you're thinking, do I know you? Have we <laughs> met? Uh, are you my second cousin, third removed? Yep. Were you on my podcast? Are you trying to get on my podcast? And then they turn around and they go, I love your show, man. Well done. It's good to finally meet you. And then you go, oh, so I didn't know you, you know? But now I know what you want. Now I can get in the conversation. So yeah. it's that anticipation that restricts you from making a logical decision. So the best way to do it, as I say, if I didn't know you, Andrew, and I wanted to be on your podcast and I saw you in Australia, I'd be like, Hey, uh, you think Tech Hawaii, Andrew? I, I've seen you, you. You don't know me, but I've seen your show and I love it. How relaxed would you be the second I informed you you didn't know me? Yeah, How it's good. It's, yeah. It, so, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so try that. So if you're in a situation where you know you are the stressful element of this, you know it, own it, do a temperature check. Now, again, sadly, folks, you guys are going out to keep people like me safe, and I appreciate you. But we also know that some of those situations you're going into can be harmful. So get a temperature check really quick to find out how that person is. So to, 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 to understand very, very quickly, are you in a safe place? Are you in a safe position? Is this person a guy that's just made a mistake and is going to be grateful that you pointed out what it is and he takes a ticket and he goes home and he enjoys the rest of the night? But more than anything, make sure you're safe by checking the audience, checking the temperature of who you're going to be talking to. I love this. This is so awesome. So it is simple. Take the test first. Make sure the receiver is in a mode to hear you so that you can be impossible to misunderstand. This is great advice, Steve. Final takeaways for our audience. Um, any other thing you want to share about uh, observations on communication that uh, maybe we didn't get to? Uh, yeah, you're up against it. You know, we're in a planet now <laughs> where for the past 10 years, we have outsourced our communication to things called social platforms. In the old yeah. days, when you had a baby, you'd phone up your mates, invite them over for a cigar and show them the little baby and go, there you go, I got one. Now what do we do? We shove it on Facebook and try to count the likes. Oh, we've only got 20 people that like my baby. You know, <laughs> we're not getting any better at communication Marry that to the fact that we've gone through COVID where more people are not communicating with each other. Mm. And then on top of that, add up to the fact that we are all in an uncomfortable position because of, well, we've got to be careful what we say because of racial tension, because of religion, because of politics. There's so much going on now that's causing us to be apprehensive about talking. OK, mm. so what do most of us do? We stop talking. Yeah. yeah. Well, doesn't that alienate the problem? You know, yeah. the bottom line of it is I would rather I, I would rather ask a stupid question than to remain ignorant. Yeah, 100%. And so I urge you today, keep focusing on communication. It is a dying skill set that we need to bring back. I love that. There you go, folks. Keep focusing on communication for security, for relationships, for all aspects of your life. It's super important. And pick up the book while you're on the way. Blue Fishing, The Art of Making an Impact. Steve, thank you so much for being here today. We will talk again soon, sir. Appreciate you. Have a Thanks great day. Hello, everybody.